Here is the interesting question that might get you puzzled. You need to explain why the calculation that you see is correct. And you have a calculation 1 plus 1 equals 10. Give yourself 10 seconds and let me give you a hint. Try to think out of the box and try to see what else can be going on here besides just the calculations. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Typically, when we do calculations, we use 10 digits in the decimal system. We use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. But here, calculations are done in the binary system. And there are only two digits in the binary system, 1 and 0. So what happens when you get calculation in the binary system and you add 1 plus 1, what looks 10 in the decimal system looks like 2 in the binary system. So the correct answer, this calculation is possible because of the binary system. Let me demonstrate this to you. If you launch calculator in Windows and then switch to the programmer calculator, you can choose different systems. By default, it's a decimal system. But if we switch to binary and then we can add 1 plus 1 equals what looks like 10 in reality is 2 in the binary system. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the very interesting question from the real test some of you might find challenging. Despite being tricky, you will have a lot of fun trying to find the solution. Because this question tests your imagination, spatial thinking, logical thinking, and attention to details. Please take a look at the picture and identify all triangles in this picture. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be the right time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Give yourself about 10 seconds. This is typically about as much time you'll get on the real test. Did you come up with the answer? Let me give you a tip. Keep in mind though that on the real test nobody is going to give you any suggestions. But make sure to consider the possibility of one shape being inside the other. Now let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. It is mind-boggling, but there are 35 triangles here. Can you believe it? Certainly was a huge surprise to me as I was discovering them. Let me draw all of them for you. I will start by drawing small border triangles. There are 10 of them. Please count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now let's do next 10 triangles. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And now let's do next 5. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Another 5, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then the last 5, 31, 32, 33, 34, and the last one is 35. Do you think we missed any? Please make sure to leave your comment and let us know if there is even more. Hopefully you nailed this question and now learned how to answer similar questions on the test. If you like solving word puzzles, this question might be for you. You need to look at the nine letters on the left and determine what word can you form using all the letters in the box. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds and see what's the best way to solve the problem. I'm going to give you a quick hint. Sometimes, as I move from left to right or from right to left or diagonally 
or up and down, you might get an idea of what kind of word you can form. So hopefully this tip will help you here. Do you recognize the pattern? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, there are many words that can be formed with the letters in these nine boxes. But the best word that we can form contains all the letters and contains no duplicates. If we think of the sequence and start in the middle and then go around counterclockwise, we see that we can form a word brilliant, B-R-I-L-L-I-A-N-T. So the correct answer is brilliant. Hopefully you've nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. I'm very excited to share with you this question, which we frequently see on the test. Despite being tricky, you will have a lot of fun trying to find the answer. This is one of those questions that is easy to understand and it challenges your brain and improves your IQ. It also tests your imagination, spatial thinking, logical thinking and attention to details. Take a look at the picture and see how many squares do you see. Think again. The answer might be more challenging than you think. Now might be the good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Give yourself about 10 seconds. This is typically how much you will get in the real test. Do you know the answer? Let me give you a tip. Keep in mind though that on the real test, most of the time you don't get any tips. But since we're doing it together, I'd like you to consider the possibility of one shape being inside the other. Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. There are 14 squares that can be identified in this picture. This definitely came as a big surprise to me. Do you see them all? Some of them might be much easier to identify than others. Let me draw them for you. There are nine small squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Even though small squares are easy to see and identify, let's look at the medium sized squares. There are four of them number 10, number 11 number 12 and number 13 and then there is one large square this is number 14 what do you think about this challenge were you able to solve it right away in case you see some additional shapes that we missed which is always a possibility please make sure to share them in the comments of this video hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test I had this question being asked as part of consulting job interview. How many seconds are there in a year? Take a look at the picture. It might give you a hint. Do you think you know the answer? Think of the logic. How would you calculate how many seconds are there in a year? Or maybe there is an alternative. Always try to think out of the box. This would be my hint to you. And give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is as much time as you might get answering these types of questions in the test. Now let's continue and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, this is a tricky question and it challenges you in understanding of the word second. There are two meanings in the word second. One is second, for example, one minute has 60 seconds. But second one is second, where you have sequence of first and second. And the second meaning of the second is used in this particular question. So if we go back to the question, in the year there are 12 months and there are 12 second days. One second day in each month. January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd, and etc. Hopefully you've nailed this question. It gives you some laugh and you now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an interesting question which tests your spatial thinking. How many four-sided shapes do you see? And you're presented with the picture on the left, which has a lot of different shapes. First, you need to be clear on the definition of four-sided shape and have a good understanding of what it means. Once you have the definition, 
you can count all the shapes on the picture that match this criteria. Did you figure it out? Let's jump to the solution so we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. So as I mentioned, first let's do a definition of the four-sided shape. And the simple definition is that the shape has four sides. For example, a rectangle has four sides. And you see a rectangle one here, which has four sides. And this shape here matches the criteria. Shapes that are covered by other shapes are not four-sided. For example, we have something that mimics square here, but because it's covered by another square, it is not four-sided. Actually, it has five sides. The key to answering this question is to make sure that you didn't miss any shapes. In fact, it's so easy to miss because some shapes are inside of the other. Let me show you all eight shapes here on this picture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's look at inside shapes that form another shape. Shape two and three form shape four. And shapes one, two, and three form a shape five. Now, was it easy to solve for you? Do you see any shapes we might have missed? Please share your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Here's the challenging question you might frequently see on the test. Florist has 57 beautiful plants. All but seven were sold. How many plants are left? There are four different choices. Seven, choice B 57, choice C 64, and choice D 50. Take a close look at this question and see if you might come up with the answer. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is typically as much time as you would get on the test. Do you think you came up with the answer? Let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. I think you heard me correctly. So the answer is seven plants are left. How is it possible? The answer is hidden in the tricky worded sentence. All but seven died. So this is why the correct answer is A. Florist had 57 plants and all of them but seven died. That's why the correct answer is A, seven. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here is the question which tests your understanding of English language, your vocabulary, as well as your ability in logical reasoning. What has four legs but can't walk? Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you think you found the answer? Let me give you a quick hint. Think out of the box and think of not necessarily something that walks. Did you figure it out? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured it, the answer is chair, and the alternative answer could be armchair, table, or stool. Hopefully you figured it out on your own and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's the interesting question, which is easy to understand, but at the same time you will have a lot of fun solving it. You need to calculate the simple expression, 12 divided by 2 and then multiply it on the value in parentheses, which is 3 minus 1. Take a look closely and see if you can come up with the answer. There are three operations here, division, multiplication and subtraction. All you need to determine is which one to do first, second and third. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue and get it solved together. The order of operations in math tells us that the first expression we need to solve is in parentheses. We first need to calculate 3 minus 1. And obviously the answer is 2. The big question is what do we do next? The order PEMDAS tells us that we need to do multiplication and division. But what order doesn't mention is that we need to do it from left to right. And what's interesting, the acronym itself is a little bit confusing because it shows multiplication first and then division. 
But in our case, we need to do division first and divide 12 by 2, and then do multiplication. Once we divide 12 by 2, we get to 6, and the final expression we need to solve would be 6 multiplied by 2. So the correct answer here is 12. Let me give you a quick hint. Even if you don't know the answer, you can always use a calculator. Most modern calculators do support expressions. Let me demonstrate. For example, if you type calculator in Google, it shows the calculator which you can use to solve the expressions. You can preview expression and once you hit the equal sign, it calculates it for you. And you can see that the correct answer here is 12. Another alternative is to use Microsoft Excel, which is available on almost any Windows machine. Here you can enter the expression right inside any cell. And Microsoft Excel will perform the calculations. So did you solve this challenge on your own? Was it easy for you? Please share your thought process and your solution in the comment section of this video. Here is the tricky question, which tests your imagination, knowledge of English words and logical reasoning. What word can you form using all the letters in the box? And you are presented with the box that contains nine squares and each square has a letter inside. Take a closer look at this picture and see if you can come up with the answer. This might be the right time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, there are quite a few words that can be formed with these letters, but the best word will only contain one of each of the nine letters presented here on the screen. The best solution here is think of the sequence. A lot of times authors of this question put letters in the opposite orders of the way we currently read this. So for example, if we read left to right or top to bottom, they might put word letters that will go in the sequence from right to left or from bottom to the top. And this is exactly the case here. The correct answer here is word beautiful, which starts in the upper right corner. And then you go by the letters B-E-A-U-T-I-F-U-L. And that's how you get to the correct answer, which is the word beautiful. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the interesting question you see sometimes on the test. It checks your knowledge of verbal reasoning and understanding of the problem. And some people might argue that it tests your sense of humor as well. Young professional realized that pockets of his jeans were totally empty. But then he realized there was something else in there. How is it possible? Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. This is typically what you get on the test. Also. I'm gonna give you a hint. Please take a close look at the picture to see if you might see something unusual. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. And the solution is very simple. There was a hole in the pocket of the young professional's jeans. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Please check additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please share this video with other people that might benefit. Thanks for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please leave questions, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. All the best on your job interview and assessment test. And I'll see you in my next video.